Okay, thank you. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. Amen, amen. It's nice when I, I and I come to understand that people are able to pick me up and I'm also able to pick them. So we're going to go into our song service session. It's led by our sister, uh, Kataike and Violet. And then we shall begin later on. So our sister Anne, come on board and lead us through the song session as we wait for others so that we can begin. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm happy to be part of this Sabbath worship today. And as we start our song service, let's humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Let's pray. Kind and loving Father in heaven, we come before you this afternoon. We thank you for the gift of life you have given unto us, Lord. We pray that, Father, may you accept our worship today. And Father, speak to us as we shall be listening to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. At this moment, we are beginning with our first hymn, hymn number 524 in SDA, and then Springs of Joy, it's hymn number 60. So, Brother Justin, you can help share the screen, if possible, for the hymn. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It's our first hymn. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Just to trust upon his promise. Just to know that says that. Oh, how I trust him, how I approve him, oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him, oh, how sweet. To trust in Jesus, just in blood, just in simple faith to blind me with the healing, cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust in you. For and door, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all for grace to trust in more. more. Yes, 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 we trust, trust Jesus. Jesus, just from sin, self to Jesus. I I the more Jesus I'm so glad I learned to trust you, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. Okay. I know that thou art with me, will be with me till the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I prove him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, all oh, for grace to trust him more. 
Amen. We really thank God. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Our next hymn is hymn number 254. The great physician now is near. And in springs of joy, it's 66. You can still share the screen. Hymn number 254. Uh, before our sister Vela. Yes. We don't leave the, the conducting team to lead out. So I request that we could follow along, we could sing along, but while our otherwise we may not have a great worship as we proceed. So the rest of us let us mute and leave the conducting team to proceed. Uh, thank you. Him to five four. The great physician now is near. The great physician now is near. The great physician now is near. The sympathizing Jesus. He speaks the drooping heart to cheer, or oh, hear the voice of Jesus. Sweet as not in seraph song, sweet as lemon hot or tongue, sweet as carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. All glory to the dying Lamb, I now believe in Jesus. I love the blessed Savior's name, I love the name of Jesus. Sweet as not in seraph song, sweet as name on mortal tongue, sweet as carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. His name dispels my guilt and fear. No other name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the precious name of Jesus. Sweet as not in seraph song, sweet as name on mortal tongue. Sweetest sorrow ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. His name dispels my guilt and fear, no other name but Jesus. Oh, how my soul delights to hear the channel's name of Jesus. Sweet as not in seraph song, sweet as name on mortal tongue, sweet as carol ever sung, Jesus, blessed Jesus. Indeed, Christ is the great physician. Our next hymn choice is Wonderful Words of Life. Hymn number 286 in SDA hymn and 38 in Springs of Joy. Sing them over again to me. Sing them over again to me, wonderful words of life. Let me more of the beauty see, wonderful words of life. 
words of life and beauty. Teach me faith and beauty, beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Christ, the blessed one, gives to all wonderful words of life. Sing and listen to the loving call, wonderful words of life. All so freely given, who in us to heaven. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Sweetly echo the gospel call, wonderful words of life. Offer pardon and peace to all, wonderful words of life. Jesus, only Savior, sanctified forever. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of life. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, we thank our conducting team that has led us through the session of songs. Yes, before we go into the sermon, I request we have one person to share with us a testimony, only one person to share with us something good that God has done for them this week amidst the trials and tribulations we are facing. And then we shall directly go into our session for today. Praise God. Praise Him. Praise God, members. Praise Him. Uh, I would like to thank God for the gift of life that He has given unto us, and also for the for the time that we are sharing here. My testimony. It is uh, at this at our home. At our home, we have um, we have uh, our neighbors are Muslims, and there is this young girl. She's a good friend of mine. So we have been with her. Like she's very young, but we have been with her. When I come, she she shifts from their home and comes to to stay with me at our home. Even she sleeps with us. So yesterday, I was very surprised to by today when she told me yesterday, she knew that today was Sabbath, but whenever she comes and showers and gets clothes, the mother stops her to give her the clothes. So she, I think she kept it in mind. So yesterday evening, she saw the mother was not around. She went in the house and, and stole the clothes for the Sabbath and she kept them at our home because that's where she slept. She sleeps, sorry. So today morning, she showered and then came home and she dressed up and she came for worship, but she was dressed in good clothes. So I asked her, but no, no, why did you get, where did you get the clothes? And she told me that yesterday when I saw mommy and I know today it is Sabbath, I have to come and worship in good clothes. I stole the clothes and kept them in your house. So I wore them. I stole two dresses and one skirt and a blouse, so so that I be worshiping in them whenever it is Sabbath from your home. I praise God that she knows the Sabbath and also she likes to worship with us and also she knows some hymns 
oh, oh wow charge i thought god my prayer is that we pray for her that she continues knowing the sabbath she's very anxious but it is really i thank god for that that she mastered the sabbath and whenever friday comes she starts singing for me uh, singing for me the song remember the sabbath day remember the sabbath day i really like her that she mastered the sabbath from home and she knows that it is very really sabbath i thank god for that and I want God to keep her in the line so that she may grow now in the Sabbath and worshiping Him in truth. May God bless you. Amen. <laughs> wow, wow, amazing. We really pray bless that. Bless you too. Yeah, indeed. We really pray that God continues nurturing that in that young, young little star that one day she lives to testify more about the, the Sabbath. The next time we shall share more, but because of the time constraint, I also see people giving in their requests for him choices. We shall do more of that next time. I welcome once again the Muslim members that have made it to come to this place. And I see members from KCC. I also see members from other countries. We are really glad to have you for this session. May God really bless you. We welcome our elder, Elder Mooka Singh, and the family. We also welcome our dear chaplain and the family, Pastor Peter Mazire. May God really bless you and may he continue comforting you. Yes, at this point of time, our preacher is Dr. Ntamba. He's a Mosda associate. He was once a Mosda president. Uh, this week, Mosda has been covering something about the health message and looking at the kind of times in which we are, we believe it's a matter of urgency. I pray that God uses his servant as he blesses us with the word, that word. At this point of time, I request Mama, Mama Karen, to give us a word of prayer, to pray for the testimony and the prayer request our sisters given in and also usher us into the session for as the preacher comes on board. Mama, you're most welcome. Uh, thank you, Brother Justin. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Um, I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, let us humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Our kind and loving fine heaven, thank you so much for this uh, beautiful day you blessed us with. Lord, thank you for the gift of the Sabbath day where we can come into your presence as your children and we can refresh our souls, Lord. Thank you so much for the gift of life, the breath you have preserved in our nostrils. Lord, thank you so much for this fellowship that you have enabled us to have. Lord, we invite your presence amidst us wherever we are so that uh, we can learn from your throne of mercy, Lord. In a special way, I pray for the team that is leading uh, this entire Sabbath program. Lord, uh, anoint them with a special portion of your infinite wisdom, Lord, and inspire them so that they can continue doing this week after week, Sabbath after Sabbath. Lord, I also pray for the preacher for today, uh, Dr. Mutamba. I know that you have given your words to him. Lord, uh, I pray that as he presents whatever message you have given him, may it reach our hearts and souls, Lord, and may it uh, lift our spirits up. Lord, uh, thank you once again for uh, everything you are to us. I pray for every uh, person who's uh, listening uh, now. Lord, I pray that you bless them and meet them at the point of needs. We also remember the sick people on bed and the people who are taking care of them, though they may not be able to worship you as how we are, we stand in the gap and we pray for them. Lord, uh, I pray that you uh, you meet uh, them uh, at their sick bed and uh, uh, renew their strength, Lord, and uh, preserve their lives according to your will, Lord. We surrender this moment once again into your hands. Lead us through this session. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yes, Dr. Mtamba, you're most welcome to lead us through the next session. 
Thank you, and thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I hope I'm audible and everyone is able to get me very well. If that is true, someone say yes. Yes. You are audible. Yes. Wow. Praise the Lord. I, I am so happy for this opportunity. And I thank God that I am considered and given a chance to come and share his word with his children. My name is Dr. Mutamba Fred. I am uh, a child of God. I'm so much excited uh, to share with you today's afternoon as, as we share in the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm so happy to see a number of people that are joining us in this worship. And uh, with all due respect, allow me to mention a few people here. I saw Mr. Mulangila is a personal friend and my boss. You're welcome. Thank you for taking time and worshiping us. And as I said, we want to encourage ourselves in the word of the Lord. So you're welcome, please. I saw some friend of mine, Ivan. I saw Juliet. I'm seeing a fraternity of Musda, my mentors and my parents. It's an honor that I have, I have you in this audience. Thank you so much. And I praise the Lord for your presence. I don't know whether I will have the opportunity to share my screen. I am not so much good in technology. I hope someone will help me. And I share this presentation that I have with us. But before I even start sharing my presentation, I have a testimony. And I want to thank God for this, for this week in particular. As all of us know, we, we are going through rather tough times. As, as the medical fraternity where I come from and as doctors and nurses and everyone at hospital, as long as you're in a hospital environment, we, we are going through unprecedented times, tough, both physically and emotionally. We are seeing what is not pleasing and we are seeing people in agony. But personally, I have a testimony. I have seen the hand of God in all this. He has miraculously healed people. We, we are used as, as the community now that everyone is in lockdown and people are not walking around. We are so much dependent on social media and, and probably the formal media. And so sometimes it appears like everyone is dying from wherever they are because you wake up different platforms announcing people who have died. Of course, it is so sad, it's very unfortunate, and it's painful. It's a big pain that we are losing our own. I, I, I know many of us on this, on this, on these congregations know some friends, some personal relatives that we have lost. And so we share with you and we convey our sincere condolences as we share with you the pains you're going through and remember you in our prayers. But I want to testify to this church that God is in the healing ministry. I have seen thousands of people that have got well and no one can pride in their getting well. We only give glory and honor to the God of heaven. So he is really done great in healing people. In a special way, I also want to share with you that even when there have been tough moments the past few weeks, this in a special way has been harder for me. When I was asked that I will lead in today's worship, that was early last week, I did consent, thinking it would be a very busy week as usual, but I will create some time and seek the Lord in his, for his guidance to prepare what I would share with his children. Sadly, this week was very, very tight, tight in the sense that it was busy for me, both physically, but unfortunately, it was emotionally draining. I, I went through what is so hard. Some of us know that we lost we lost um, Pastor Vita Mazire's mother, and I was involved in care for, for that lady. So it was so draining to see to see her go. Yet I know Pastor Vita Mazire as a friend and as a brother. It wasn't easy. Yesterday I sat down and I was contemplating declining the offer that I had taken on to come and minister to, to, to God's children. But I also thought about them that are organizing. What would they do? And I said, God, you know, this is your work and you will do it. And so I want to thank God that I'm finally here. And I pray by the end of today's discussion, he has spoken to one or two of us. For that, 
And on that, on, on that note, I welcome you to my presentation and I pray that God speaks to all of us before we, we end our, our discussion. Do I have the chance to, to share my slide? Someone who is in charge of the, please get back to me if it is possible. It's possible. Can be allowed to share your slide. If the, the host is working on that. Okay. Let me try it out and see. Good. Uh, people able to see my some slides? Please say yes if you are. Yes, Dr. Mutaba. Yes. Wow, praise the Lord. So yes. today, uh, like people have had said earlier, we're going to be discussing something to do with health and uh, I will lead the discussion. You also will allow me to try to take off the video so I don't take people's attention as they want to see who Dr. Mutamba is. By what I got the definition of health. I defined health by the health by the World Health Organization. World Health Organization defines health as a state of physical, social, and mental well-being of a person. And not, please note that it doesn't necessarily mean absence of disease. So mere absence of ill health is not health, but it is a state of one being physically well, emotionally well, or call it mentally well, socially doing well. I want also to state that I speak to you as I speak to you as, as a child of God. I am a Seventh-day Adventist Christian. And so I come to you to speak to you as today, basically, as a child of God. And I want to share with you from that biggest capacity. But I, I also speak to you as a medical practitioner. I, I, I quoted for you a scripture, which will be the basis of our discussion. For those of us who have our Bibles closer, you can refer to it. Jeremiah 17, 14. The Bible says, Heal me, O oh Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise. We will refer to that later on as we go on in our discussion. Uh, today, as we speak, uh, health is a big subject. It has always been, but it has become more in these days. And so, uh, it is at this time that I want us to discuss a few issues to do with health, but in the context in the context of a Christian child or in the context of a child of God. And so I want to share with us the relationship between health and the gospel. As you can see there, I quoted for you that the gospel of health was intended to be the right arm of the message that the Seventh-day Adventist Church proclaims to the world. I want to assume that we have probably some people in this audience who are not Seventh-day Adventists. And so you can, for convenience, substitute it with a Christian, that the healthy message is intended to be the right hand of the gospel, of the good news that any Christian or any child of God gives or has to offer to the world. If you can relate very well with the Bible, we all know how much Christ put forward and put much the message, the good health, the health message ahead of the gospel. And so today, that's what I want us to realize in our sharing and in our discussion. The Lord desires his church to be a perfect body. Now his church, I mean you and me. You and me. Our God desires us to be a perfect body. A body is one which has all the arms, not only the body without the arms, but the body and the arm together and every member working as a part of one great whole. As the right arm is connected with the body, so the health reform and medical missionary work is connected with the third angel's message, which is the message of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, and to work efficiently as the right arm for the defense of the body of truth. What do I want to say to us here? That the health message as the right arm of the gospel, as useful as the other part of the body. You and me have our arms, if you're not physically deformed. 
And we know most of us are right-handed, but even when you are left-handed, I refer to you as well. We know how important our arms are. There is no one time the arm can ever say, let that body exist without me. I will work my own ways and let the body work its own ways as well. We are complete if the body complements each other, the body parts complement each other. And so uh, what I'm trying to say that as, as, as the hand complements the body, as the eyes complement the mouth and as my legs support me to walk and I use my head to walk and I use my, the heart is pumping blood and each part of the body is complementing each other. So is the health message complementing the gospel and without one, we might not necessarily have the other. But also note that we said that the gospel of health is intended to be the right hand. Conventionally, most people are right-handed. That means that their strongest hand is the right one. And so as, as we think of any other part of messages that can complement the gospel, the health message comes out very strong and it is imperative and it is just very important that all of us have uh, particular knowledge and uh, take initiative to package ourselves and keep ourselves healthy. And that's why I come to call to call you to your, in, what I call your individual responsibility. We have just noted that uh, the gospel has the health message as its right hand. And so we are saying that for one to efficiently propagate the gospel, the health message has to lead as well. And therefore, it is a call to each individual personally to make sure they are updated as, 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 as far as the health message is concerned, but as well, they are living a healthy lifestyle. And there I, 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 wrote, for, I wrote and say that the task to live a healthy life is an individual responsibility. For me, it is an act of worship to preserve one's body and mind in a health state. If you have your Bible closer to you, you can refer to that scripture I quoted for us there, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 19 and 20. I'll paraphrase it for you, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, that our bodies are bought by a price, and that our bodies are not our own. And therefore, we are mandated to preserve them in good shape and in good state. That's why I say that it is a responsibility of each one of us to preserve our body and our mind in a very healthy state. Living healthy is a long-term project. It is a lifetime behavior that you and me must develop. And every child of God is supposed to, to, to de develop that, that habit of living healthy. And so I wrote for us and say that living healthy is a long-term or a lifetime behavior that must be developed by every professing child of God. And thereafter, propagated in our daily interactions in the world. See, what, when we say that we, we, the health message is, is what must come ahead of the gospel, it, it means that as every child of God intends to, to to walk in this world and interact with everyone, we are called upon to develop a habit that everything we do leads us to having a healthy body. And so it is a, a behavior, it is a character that we develop. It is not something you do as a single event and you walk away, but it is a lifetime process that in everything you do as a child of God, you remember it will eventually count on your health and therefore it must always be leading to a healthful living. For those of us who are living contrary to the principles of healthy living, there is chance this behavior can be learned and developed th through a thoughtful, intended and prayerful actions. I, I might not be in a position for this time because we don't have so much time to start and air out that this is right, this is wrong, this is good for healthy living, and we enlist all the principles of good living and as children of God. But as one purpose says, you can, on a daily basis, learn that which is a good principle to keep your health and your body in good shape. But also if you check yourself and for any reasons you realize that probably you are living contrary, your life is left to the waves of the world, 
and your life is there for whatever has got to, imp to impress on it has, can take it in different directions. You have a chance that when you thoughtfully sit and seek the Lord in prayer, you can reform your ways, you can reform your living habits, and you can reform and you can get to the line of getting to healthful living. And so that's why I say that for those of us who are living contrary to the principles now, we can, uh, we can do what? We can have opportunity to learn as long as we intend and we pray about it, we can eventually get in line and start living a life that glorifies our God. Remember, we said our bodies are his and he bought them with a price and definitely we will propagate the gospel as long as we give hope and as long as we give people a message that gives them good health. Our responsibilities are to start now, but they are still to go through even eternity. See, I got this quotation, that to keep the body in a healthy condition in order that all parts of the living machinery may act harmoniously should be a study of our life. And so this writer seems to suggest that this is a lifetime study that I'm going to study from the day I live and start and get to understand this, that I'm called to, to study and understand how to keep my body in a healthy condition in order that it will act as a powerful for, I mean, as long as I live. And then he continues and says that the children of God cannot glorify him with sickly bodies and draft minds. That the children of God, we cannot, as children of God, we cannot glorify our God with sickly bodies and minds that are dwarfed. It is not possible. And so it is our responsibility to check and see that our bodies are in good shape and it is a lifetime study. Learn how to keep our bodies in good shape such that we will eventually glorify our God with minds and bodies that are fit. Okay, so the question for us is not what will the world say? But how lie claiming to be a Christian tradition God has given me? Shall I work highest temporal spiritual good by my body as a temple for the enduring of the Holy Ghost? Or shall I sacrifice myself to the world's ideas and practices? Think about that question. It's many a times that all our decisions are influenced by the question, what will my friend say? Shall I be perceived? Will I be accepted? Will this sound normal? Is this our culture? How do people think about me? These are some of the questions that always linger in our minds before we take different decisions. Today, I want to challenge you that think of it in this direction. Shall I, a child of God, let my, 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 my holy body, the holy in the Holy Ghost, I mean, be yielded to the influences and the practices of this world. Think about it in that direction. As a professing child of God, wouldn't you want the creator of heaven and earth to delight in dwelling in your temple? The highest temporal spiritual good when you take time and keep it safe for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. So I want you today, it's okay for the world to think contrary. It's okay for people to think of you as behind the schedule. Of you as probably, I don't know what they have to go to use for you, but as long as it is honorable and convenient for the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, then you are prepared for a gift and for a reward that is. And for that, I want to call you to yearn for it. For that, I want to call you to long to share in that gift that is eternal. And remember, when you prepare your body in that shape, then like we started to say, we started by saying that uh, the right hand message, the right hand of the of the gospel 
will definitely be upheld and then you will propagate the good news, which is the sole duty of man as long as we live on this earth. So having shared with you our responsibilities as far as the, 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 the health message and the health and selves health is concerned, I want to leave this by summarizing it like this. It is a realization that our bodies are our bodies are bought with a price. And then we here we are living in this world, which has got a lot to offer in contrary. I want to encourage you to take a bold choice in every decisions you do every day. As a child of God, you cannot glorify your God with a sickly and uh, a feeble mind. And so you uh, I want to challenge you and encourage you, take on a daily basis, decisions that will in the will in the in the in the uh, improve your well-being, improve the power of mind, and definitely will keep you in good health and in good terms with your God. There, there's a slide I want to share with us here. It's a summary of principles that have tested time and they are known eventually give us and keep us in good shape. It must be familiar with most of us. It is an acronym, New Start. New Start stands for N is nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust in God. These are different subjects that if each of us takes time and thinks about each and every, each, each of them, I mean, think about nutrition. Every time you think about what you're going to put in your body and you give it a thoughtful mind, and then you do it with the guidance of an informed decision. You exercise adequately. You give yourself plenty of water. You, you take time and take sunshine and take a good basking and, take, and then you are temperate. And then you can access good. In Uganda, we are blessed. We have these things in abundance. We have clean water, we have abundance of sunshine, we have abundance of air, save for a few people who are dwelling in some places, and then you take rest. What a busy society today. What a busy schedule everyone has. But as long as you create some time and give yourself some rest, and lastly, and very important, probably the most important, you yield your trust in God, you will definitely live a healthy life you definitely have a healthy lifestyle. You definitely have your tempo high and high and ready and a very comfortable place for the dwelling of the Holy Ghost. So today I will not, I will not go for one by one of these, but I just wanted to remind most of us, and for those of us for whom it is a new, a new idea, take time and take a study about each, there's a lot of information about each subject. I mean, information about exercise, information about water, sunshine, and your trust in God. And so today, I just wanted to share that with you as a reminder. I want to draw your attention to, to, to the current situation. Now, it, it would not be possible that we would talk about health and we live without talking about COVID. And we are speaking today on the 3rd of July, 2021 in Uganda. I mean, it wouldn't be fair. And so you realize that I, I really had to pay some attention to it, even when the subject is quite wide. So I chose to summarize it like this. The reality of COVID-19 cannot be overlooked. Even them that at one time thought it was a political idea, it was some white man's sort of condition, it was some one initiative, at least they all of us have come to believe how real it is. And so I want to challenge all of us. And I want to submit all of us that it is everyone's duty. It is my duty and it is your duty to protect yourself. It is everyone's duty to protect themselves and those around them from contracting the deadly coronavirus. When I was thinking um, about this, how deadly it is and the weight of the word deadly, I thought of very many stories, the sad stories I have witnessed. And I thought down here and write one by one. And I, I mean, I said I might 
this is my congregation. But for purposes of putting it simple, I want to say that deadly is an understatement. This virus has ravaged, this virus has tormented people and it has crumbled the whole world. Uh, some of us have seen it in statistics, others have heard it on newspapers and probably watched it in news broadcasts. But I want to say, and I'm very sure that most of us now have experienced it personally. You see, I started by submitting to you that I speak to you as a medical doctor. And so as a doctor, I have seen the pain. I have witnessed the wrath. I have seen the agony that this has caused to humanity. And so it is also very unfortunate, like you see, that I have put there that the future of this pandemic is not yet very clear. Science seems to be not yet having all the answers we need. Think of questions like, if I get infected and I get well, will I get reinfected? And so the question says, if I don't get reinfected in the next few months, does that mean I never get reinfected for a lifetime? And all these things, science hasn't answered. We are getting vaccinated. People have different ideas about them. And some question scientific researchers will say that it is a matter of time that we shall answer this. And so unfortunately that even the world of science hasn't clarified the few and the way forward with this pandemic. And so that's why I still want to re-echo it again, that it is your duty, it is your responsibility to protect yourself and your dear ones from getting, from contracting this virus. As I mean, that said and done, sounding hopeless as we might be, we have, we have a glorious hope. And this is what I want to say to all of us. We are to firmly hold onto our faith in our great physician. You see, someone starting this worship, someone sang for us the song that the great physician and God has been in the healing ministry ever since, the, ever since he, he, he created this world. And so he has been there for healing. And for us who are believers, we have the faith and with the belief that he is in, in the midst of all this. He sees as we go through this. He knows it to the dot. And so we are to hold to our faith in him. We are to hold and wait upon a great physician for help in even these very hard times we are going through. As well, we have an obligation to prayerfully seek him every day. We have an obligation to seek the guidance of God in making decisions regarding the, the actions we take on a daily basis. See, as we have different suggestions of the measures that are there to curb the spread of this, we are not at any one time, we are not going to forget the mighty power and the might saving hand of our God. And so I want to call all of us today that we have a God who is a great physician, who has been in the business of healing, and he is still involved even now, even when at times it seems like we are losing it all. He is behind and he's somewhere and he will heal this world at his time. We're also encouraged to oblige the recommendation what they have proved to be working. Can I ask all of us, get your paper, list them out, the SOPs. I want you to have them at hand on a daily basis. Every time you step out of your door, mask up. If you can, keep a distance from everyone around you. I keep telling my people that I meet on a daily basis. All of us have COVID until it is declared out of this, pan I mean, until we are declared out of this pandemic. So trust no one, even if they look healthy. So keep your SOPs as the only safeguard you have in addition to, to the only glorious hope of believing in our God. Now, what do we do for each other in these times? Uh, like I say that I have, I have had the chance to interact with the reality of this pandemic. This is what I want to tell all of us. We have a duty to care for each other in these moments. Of course, circumstances don't allow us. They don't allow us to visit our people. They don't allow us to give a warm hug. Recently, I visited a friend of mine who had lost his dad. And 
you would see the pain she has in social distancing. People want to have, want their backs to be patted. People want to have a handshake. People want to, to hug each other and feel warm. The, the times can't allow. And so we can still do it. We can give a phone call to our friends. You can text a friend of yours. Text them words of encouragement. Write them a very long email, a warm one, and speak to them. I have received some of them, and you feel like your life coming back to, 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 to you even when you're losing the hope. And so if you know some people who are battling the condition, if you know some people who are nursing them that have COVID-19, if you know some people who are battling other conditions but they can't get help because of the changes the pandemic has brought, reach out to them. If you can reach them in physical terms, reach out to them, send them some monies, send them physical items and send them food that people who are hungry. And it is a call of the current, it is our call with the professing children of God to stand out and reach our dear ones and reach the world. It is a time we have to stand and sustain this world. The world is losing hope. The world is losing it all. We cannot go as if we don't have a father in heaven. And so reach out to them, speak to them, but very importantly, play and pray unceasingly. The best service you can offer to those who are directly affected by this pandemic is to compromise your wellness and your comfort. Get out of your way and do something for their wellness. I heard of a story one time. Someone told, someone told me a story. I don't know how true it was. A building was burning on fire and it looked like everyone had given up to save whatever was inside. But there was this one young man who kept walking in and picking whatever he would find on their way. And so someone sarcastically found him with a small paper that he had sort of a book that he had moved out of the house, probably because he feared to go further because the fire was so much. And so someone asked him, what would that help? Why wouldn't you sit and be like anyone else? And he asked him, what did it help when they sat in a distance and watched? At least I saved what I did. And so this is what I want to say. It might seem as if it is nothing to them that you are reaching out to, but a text message might mean a lot in their life. Don't underestimate the power of your intention to reach out to them. Take time and reach out to them. As you reach out to those of you know that are being affected by this pandemic, pray and pray and season for them. Lastly, and this is going to be my last submission for this, sub, for this discussion today. I want us to talk about mental health. I realize our time is fast spent. World Health Organization de defines or describes mental health as a state of well being in which an individual realizes his or her own abilities. They can cope with the normal stresses of life and can work productively and fruitfully and is able to make a contribution to his or her community. See, when I, when I read through this definition, the, the, the definition says that we are able to cope with the normal stresses of life. But it appears like life sometimes gives us stresses that are abnormal, that are extraordinary. It would be absurd to tell someone that what you're going through now is normal stress. It is not normal stress. And so even when we are subjected to abnormal stress, we are expected to realize our abilities, cope with these stresses, and we work productively. And as long as we are able to do this, then we are mentally doing well. See, someone wrote and said that health is a treasure. And of all the temporal possessions we have in life, it is the most precious. And I, for me, I, I am convinced and I, am, I think that that statement is more true for mental health. Mental health is a treasure that all of us have. And if you have any possessions in life, as long as you have your mental health in good shape, it is the most precious treasure you have. And so for all of us, it is mandate, a big one, a big mandate to make sure that we preserve our mental health. But the society and circumstances around us sometimes are so much and they are too much that they can't allow us to keep in good shape and in good mental status. I began by submitting to you how I had a very emotional draining week. And I personally would feel like one of my obligations were to come and discuss with you and share with you. And I even thought of turning down this, but 
I mean, it is only the, gra the grace of God that is going to sustain us. And we praise God that he's not giving, us, giving up on us. And so our mental health is, is a biggest treasure that we have to aggressively guard and aggressively work to reviving every moment it is going down. The greatest and worst burden of this pandemic is mental ill health. I, for one, am convinced that this burden will have lasting effects on humanity, even when the pandemic is long gone. And so mental health and mental illness are determined by multiple and intersect interacting social, psychosocial, psychological, logical factors, just as other health and illnesses are in general. What I'm trying to say that different sectors of life, different spheres of our interaction that we go through in life will have a direct impact on the state of our mental health, our social well-being, our psychological well-being, and our biological well-being will directly affect our mental status. And this pandemic has not spared anything. It has turned the social life down. Our psychosocial well-being is also affected and definitely our biology. I mean, we are suffering this virus. It is causing a lot of mess in our bodies. And therefore, these, these factors, they are all affected and definitely our mental health is also affected. I want to submit to us that it is in, that as we go through this pandemic, we ought to optimize our wellness in the above spheres. So if there are any ways we can support the social well-being of our friend, if there are any ways we can improve our psychological well-being, if there are any ways we can support our well-being biologically and for of the people around us, we need to embrace that such that as we go through to the end of this pandemic, we will come out with a sound and strong mental health because it is a treasure and the most precious of those that we have in. So uh, it, is, it is our duty to make sure that our social well-being, our psychological well-being is improved in every single engagement we take on on a daily basis. But as we do this, please be mindful of the mental well-being of those around us. So if you have a calm night and you slept well, wake up and give a call to someone, reach them out. You might be the only person who has greeted them that day because we are all in our houses locked up in this lockdown. And so I want to encourage all of us See, the value and the, 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 the impact of a good mental health cannot be, cannot be underlooked in our daily basis. I had to highlight a few, a few quotations I, I got from the statement of the World Health Organization. Mental health is essential for well-being and functioning of individuals. That we all agree. We need a good mental status to do our, our daily routines. Good mental health is an important resource for individuals, families, communities and nations at large, and definitely the world at large. And this church, we need people who are doing well upstairs, people who are doing well in their mental faculties. Mental health as an indivisible part of general health contributes to the functions of society and has an effect on overall productivity. The productivity of each individual is directly, directly affected by their status of mental well-being. Mental health concerns everyone. Please underline that. Mental health concerns everyone as it is generated in our everyday lives. Look, in our homes, in our schools, at our workplaces, and in our leisure activities. Do you realize how mental health cuts across every other aspect of life we go through? So in our homes, at school, even when they are closed, when they open up, we need to remember this. At our workplaces, daily interactions as we work with people, interact with friends, we need to be very mindful of the mental health of our own and for those that are with us and those that are, are in our vicinity. Remember, we said that it is a factor of our sociology, our psychology, and our biology. And so, as we take into consideration all these factors, we need to definitely pay much attention to the well-being of our mental health. 
Positive mental health contributes to social, human, and economic capital. I think some people can emphasize this better than me. What I'm trying to say that in society, a positive mental health will definitely be a big boost to the capital, both economically, socially, and the human capital. Uh, I had to bolden this. Spirituality can make a significant contribution to mental health promotion and mental health influence and mental health influences spiritual life. You see, the, the, the writer of these statements seem to suggest that spirituality can. I want to speak contrary to them, and I'm speaking with the confidence. And I am speaking to say that spirituality does contribute significantly to the well-being of one's mental health. And so as a child of God, we are expected to be high there, doing well in our mental status, because we have a hope that the world does not have, because we have the joy that Christ gives that this world has no one else to give them. And so for us as spiritual children of God, we are expected to be the great ambassadors of the wellness of people's mentality, of the wellness of the people's mental statuses. And so number one, we need to work on our own mental health. And after doing that, we need to go out there and promote the, 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 ment the, the message of mental well-being. So as children of God, I want to conclude and I want to, as I come to my conclusion, I want to submit to all of us that even when we are going through all this, where I started, I showed us the obligation of and the, and the work and the responsibility of each and every one of us to preserve ourselves in good shape health-wise because we said that the health and the gospel can't be parted. And as we do that, we, we preserve our bodies, uh, uh, the holy and uh, convenient temples of the Holy Ghost. And definitely we become ambassadors. We go and propagate this message. And then I, I want to, to, to conclude by, by sharing with you with us a few tips that I found important. These are common tips. They are good healthy tips. All of us who are going through this, uh, they are everywhere. We have all heard about them. I want to all of us drink plenty. Drink plenty, I mean drink whatever it is at your disposal, but avoid illicit drugs. So if you have edge juice, water, name it, drink plenty and plenty. Eat well, eat timely, eat balanced diets, and they help us rest and rest adequately. Exercise and do it more frequently. Indulge in positive king, read constructive material. It is time we do self-development now. It is the only way we are going to fight all says that keep suggesting negative ideas in our minds. Learn a skill, learn a language. Learn a game in this when we are in the lockdown. Avoid misunderstandings as much as you can. This is not time to carry grudges. No, this is not the time. Now it is the time to seek for reconciliation. Now it is time to be there and be a great peacemaker. Now it is the time to forgive and forgive and forgive. Get facts and spread facts and truths alone. Don't be an ambassador of lies. Don't be an ambassador of negative messages. Get facts and facts alone. If you can't find anything to share, share the word of God. If you don't understand it, take a screenshot on your phone, share that. It will make a great impact. It is the word of God. It can't go and come back void. Do that and don't share negative and false facts that we keep seeing every day. If you get an opportunity to help someone, stretch a helping hand. It is all we can do now. Remember I said that the best we can do for people who are not doing well because of this pandemic is to get out of our routine, get out of our comfort, get out of our way and stretch out for their welfare. Lastly, pray and pray. Read the living, read the living and the evil word of our God. So uh, I conclude, I began by sharing with us a scripture. And I want to share with us the glorious hope, what I call the glorious. I have been, I have been alluding to the fact that God has been in the healing ministry. 
And I had a few scriptures I wanted to bring to our attention. Uh, Daniel, Daniel 4, 34. In, in, the, in, the chap, in chapter 4 of Daniel is where you find the story of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, out of his pride, God had humbled him. He lost his... And the Bible says, at the end of that time, Nebuchadnezzar raised my eyes towards heaven, and my sanity was restored. Then I praised the Most High. I honored and glorified him who lives forever. His dominion is an eternal dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation. This is a great king, Nebuchadnezzar. Out of all his pride, he had humbled by God. But I want to submit to all of us that this God who humbled Nebuchadnezzar taught him a lesson. Unfortunately, Nebuchadnezzar learned well, and he praised the Most High. And listen to what he said, in, importantly, what I wanted to quote for all of us. He says, his dominion is an eternal dominion, that the kingdom of God and you was from generation to generation. And even us now, we are living in a generation. I want to submit to all of us, even in this generation, the God whom Nebuchadnezzar praised thousands of years ago is still living. Nebuchadnezzar told us that this God is going to endure. His kingdom will be enduring. His influence is going to be there from one generation to another. And so even in this 21st of ours, we still have the same God in the healing ministry. I don't know how much, how rough this has been to all of us, to any of us. At least I share with Pastor Vita Mazele's family. I know they lost a mother. And I know people here who have lost people like that. I also share with other people I have seen lose their dear ones. And I also know very many of my head that have had to lose people. But also there are those who are, but are nursing the sick ones. There are those who are battling the disease. Also who are suffering other conditions, other circumstances of this life. I want to suggest to all of us that the God of the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, the God of heaven, creator of heaven and earth, his generation is with us even now in this, I mean, his, his dominion and his power is with us even in this, in this, in this generation. As, as if you, I also want to suggest to you, I mean, in your free time, go and get in the book of Luke, read the whole chapter, the chapter, that's that the sixth chapter. Uh, Christ, Christ performed about a number of miracles in that chapter, and it, he, he after the Luke ends it by quoting a number of parables as well. But importantly, he, he did heal people. Uh, just paraphrasing the chapter for you. He began by, he, he, I think, by healing a man who had a, a wrinkled hand on Sabbath, and he healed him. And then uh, that's in, the, in, in that chapter also, Luke Enlights, I mean, enlists down the disciples of Christ. That's when he, and then he was walking out in the cities. And that's where I got this 19th verse. And the Bible says that, and the people all tried to turn. Because power was coming from him and he was, he and all of them. See, if you take time and read that, that chapter, you will realize that Christ who, who, Christ, who was in the healing ministry then, is the same Christ I am talking about now. I, I wanted to get, to get to the very chapter and read for you at least number seven, verse number 17 and uh, 18. And uh, 17 and 18 is what I want to read for all of us here. Six, let me get my Bible. Yes, here I am. Verse number 17. Is, and he came down with them. He's coming with his disciples and stood in the plain. And the company of his disciples and all the great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon, which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And they that were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed, and the whole multitude sought to touch him, for there went virtue out of him and healed them all. How much more can I emphasize this? I want to submit to all of us that as Christian dated one to know that we have a healing God. And when we have a healing God, we will walk with a confidence, we will walk with a faith no one else understands. 
And then we will propagate this because we said that healthful living is the only password and is the right hand message, is the right hand of the gospel. There is no way we are going to go when we are sickly. There is no way we are going to go when we are feeble and we want to speak of a healing God. Live a, live, live a healthy life. You speak for God and people will understand you. And lastly, just remind all of us the scripture I read for us. For those of us who are sick, for those of us who are ailing, and those of us who are battling a condition, and those of us who are stressed, and those of us who are broken down, I want to call all of us, please call unto God. Ask him to heal you. Heal me, oh God, and I will be healed. It is only him that will heal us. Call him, he will save us. Save me, oh God, speak to him, and I will save. surely be saved. I want to thank God for the time we have spent together. That's, uh, with that said, I have beautiful words for all of us here as the moderator comes back. That's a beautiful song I love. I learned it from one of my patients. When they got well, they, inter they interested me in this song. And ever since I read the words of that song, it is beautiful. Oh, how I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save points to his wounded side. The cleansing stream I see, I see. Plunge, oh, it cleanses me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanses, cleanses me. Yes, it cleanses me. This, the, the, the cleansing stream, that which flows from our Savior, Jesus Christ, will heal all of us. And that's my prayer for you. I do not know if there are any submissions that people have or questions particularly, but that said, I only give glory to God and may God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Mtamba. This is uh, Joshua speaking. And I believe everyone who has been attending has uh, had a blessed, blessed sharing. Um, uh, I'll give, uh, because of time, I'll give only two people to react to this. And then I'll make my final remarks just before we end. Only two people, please. Um, I'll leave that to Adrian. Whoever is raising the hand can go first. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Okay. So, I hope I'm being heard. Hello? Hello? You heard, Joshua, you heard. At least I okay. can hear you. Okay. You should be hearing um, so, No questions. Let me just go to the final remarks. I'll continue appreciating uh, Dr. Mtamba. Thank you for the wonderful sharing, a timely message in a timely time. We are living surely in difficult times, but we thank you for the, the, the words of encouragement that you have given to us that our only hope is in God. Um, uh, I'd like to thank Elder for being part of us, Elder Milka, Mama Karen, uh, Mama Rachel, Dita Mazuri, and the family. We thank you for being with us and we continue as Musda to pray for you and pass on our sincere condolences for the loss of uh, our mother and uh, our grandmother as children. And uh, I'd like, so like to thank uh, Mrs. Katali for being with us for, from the beginning. I thank all other members from KCC and uh, from different places of the world. Some people are coming in, some are not even Adventists. I thank you for being with us. Um, Today we have had problems with network. I've had a lot of people complaining about the network, but uh, we pray that next time we, we, we get a better network. On that same note, um, I would like to just uh, remind all of us that this session is not only for us, but we can invite other members, other members from our colleges, from our different fields of uh, of work maybe, of education, you can invite a friend. And still this 
evening, we have a session of the AMO prayer convention that is organized by Musda. Please don't miss out. And today, I'm glad to say that the ladies, please, you are invited. The ladies, you are invited. Don't miss out on this interesting session, the AMO prayer convention. Please be around. And uh, with that said, I would just like to invite uh, Elder Milka to say a few words and give us a closing prayer. Uh, Joshua, I hope I'm heard. Yes. Thank you, Mutamba, also for the timely message that you gave us. Words of encouragement, words of caution. Uh, may God bless you for the wonderful service that you're doing, not only to the church, but also to the world at large. May the Lord bless your hands. Thank you also for the Muslim members for uh, continuing to stay with us and listen to God's words. And we thank you. May the Lord bless all of you. Um, I thank uh, Sister Rachel for joining us also. We are continuing to pay, pray for your peace and um, the joy that God alone can give you and our dear pastor. I know what it feels to lose a parent, but may the Lord heal and fill the space that Mama had left behind. And I'm sure the Prince of Peace will step in and give us uh, the healing in our heart and emotions. I continue to encourage everyone to take precautions like how Dr. Mutamba had mentioned. It is very important that we take precautions. And uh, we also lost another strong comrade, uh, Professor Noble, and uh, we were at the funeral service organized at the Makarara University yesterday. Uh, such a young man at 40, 46 and with such great accomplishments. We need to be reminded that we need to be ready because we do not know when our time would come. So I urge all of you to stay in faith and uh, rest in the Lord. And we have also started a new quarter, beautiful quarter, actually beautiful series of lessons. I think the theme itself is quite timely. And uh, I encourage all of you to stay and rest in the Lord. And I also encourage you to join us in the Amok Prayer Convention. It started yesterday. You will also have one today. And we'll wind up tomorrow, God willing. Thank you once again for staying with us. Let's humble ourselves and pray. Precious loving God, we thank you for this wonderful day of rest. We can see disappointments all around us. Tears, in everyone's eyes, heart melting circumstances, disappointments, distress, uncertain moment, and the future appears to be really dark. And it makes us to think, why? But it has to come to pass. One thing we are very sure that we are living during the last days. Earnestly, we come to you, loving Father. All of us, we just pretend to be okay. But sincerely, we are not. And when we come in your presence and say we are not fine, there is hope and redemption in your presence. And in that faith, we come to you and express how we feel. 
what we feel because you understand our emotions because you have been there when we come to you with a broken heart after losing our loved ones you understand how it feels but we have a hope because you are a god of resurrection and as we wait for that resurrection morning when you descend with a host of angels may we have that privilege loving father to see you face to face and to hug and hold on to our loved ones until then may peace reign over our heart because you are our strength you are a refuge and you are the only place where we can have rest and so we come to you loving god i pray for each and every most of member wherever they are create a hedge around them protect them loving god i pray for their loving parents their siblings and all the other relatives their friends make may they remain a blessing for one another continue to bless them father i pray for dr mutamba i pray for all the medical workers uganda is losing doctors every day as we hear but may you protect them loving god we don't have facilities for that sake we run to you you are our only facility you are our only place of refuge you are our only hope you pronounced let there be light and you created the firmament and everything we see and we that don't see but when we see people running away running all over looking for oxygen oh dear god you are our oxygen come and be with us loving father continue to stay with us i pray even for the members who had not been able to attend today may you protect them bless them keep them safe under your arms thank you once again for your love continue to stay with us loving god in until we meet again may your peace abide in our heart and help us to stay strong and with the courage face this life and march towards our zion and without thinking twice help us always to share the loving message and the gospel of christ to somebody and take all the glory loving god thank you once again thank you for blessing us with your presence and your love continue to stay with us for we pray in the name of your son jesus christ amen amen